hi everyone and welcome back uh, and welcome to my another video and in this video we are going to talk about top 5 ORMs in the node.js world so we are going to talk about sqlize type ORM prisma objection js knacks and there are some other ORMs are also available i mean these are not uh, the top 5 I, if i talk about there is a miko ORM objection js waterline waterline and all right so here we are going to talk about top 5 ORMs that you must learn today to get um, get ahead right so I will talk about the first which is sequelize and then we have type ORM I mean these are like my favorites also Prisma and I use next uh, on the fourth number but there are other ORMs also which we can which you can use which is objection JS Miko ORM and many others right but when it comes to the popularity and all I will go with the popularity first because this uh, sequelize came first right so if you look into the support and all sequelize has a uh, good support and it is also widely popular uh, among Node.js developers who are like uh, beginners or trying to learn Node.js with the ORM world, right? So it has like a good number of releases and then next come is the type ORM. But I'm still using type ORM in my most of the projects. If you will, so I will also talk about this is sequelize. From the logo you may be able to identify this is how we do sequelize with the Node.js. This is type ORM okay this is how we do a simple type ORM like where you define the type ORM entities uh, migrations relationships and all this is a prisma where you define a prisma schema and get started with that right prisma schema and then you prisma generate prisma migrate it's really lovely when it comes to the migration objections yes it's like uh, somewhat same as what I find in next next is also a query builder and here also we are defining the models and then writing the queries and the next is a already a SQL query builder it's more like a query builder but I find really nice I mean I have used it in my production projects and it works fine until unless you are not doing uh, extra complex things and it provides a SQL support also nicely so you can write nice number of queries while doing it so let's do a simple comparison like what are the best and the what are the worst ORMs in the Node.js world. So we see all these ORMs, SQLize, Type ORM, Prisma, Miku ORM, Waterline and many more because there are more library which I'm not wanted to cover. How we talk about ORM, when we talk about ORM, what we really uh, works. ORM framework is for what? Simplifying the process, simplifying the interaction with the database because these are the library so that we don't need to write a joins, we don't need to write a plain SQL queries while interfacing with the database. They provide object class wrappers which we can use to interface with the database. Uh, it can uh, ORM frameworks helps us to, uh, to improve portability of the applications because they abstract away the difference between the different database environment you can connect to MySQL, Postgres and all it works same because this is ORM you will just pass the uh, dialect or you can just say the connection name for the database either it is a MySQL either it is a uh, Postgres or another Oracle database the only difference is the, the code abstraction will still be the same Internally, this ORM will manage how to deal with the queries going to the different database servers, right? And uh, there are uh, big bang uh, industries out there who are contributing in SQLize type ORM and all, right? So the Prisma Labs, right? So this is origin from the Berlin and it's really getting popular. It's Prisma Labs and they are releasing the, the ORM features uh, every week or every month. And then we have uh, SQLize. SQLize is supported by, I think, uh, Red Hat. And similarly, the, the other framework, right? So SQLize, what are the advantages of SQLize? It works very well with Express and it came first, right? I know SQLize since last maybe six, seven years. SQLize supports wide range of integrations with the MySQL, uh, SQLite, PostgreSQL, and it has large community because 
if something came first and it uh, already has established community then for the another ORM they obviously need to struggle to establish their footprints right then what are the you can see the pros and cons of uh, SQLize I mean when I work with the TypeScript projects I don't see a major support in the SQLize that's the reason why I moved to the type ORM right so SQLize allows developers to map JavaScript data types to database columns and all. I mean, you still write the models and then you can do the sync and all. It provides all type of utilities like eager loading. Uh, you define the models and define the types and all. But when it comes to the TypeScript heavy projects, I don't recommend using SQLize. You can start using either Prisma or the type ORA. Now let's talk about Prisma. Prisma is like a really open source modeling project where you define a schema. Prisma schema is actually a dot file where you define the Prisma entities, the models, relationships and all, right? Uh, so what are the pros and cons about the, the Prisma? So Prisma still doesn't support the point type in Postgres. Prisma can't fetch the data with the joins. It creates a performance issue. I, I mean, you can still do it. You you can just do a nesting of uh, uh, joins and it will try to fetch, but lots of processing will be done from the Prisma side. So when I say processing and all, because at the end they are executing a same SQL query. It's all about the, the way these ORM structure their queries are different. They are just abstracting the implementation to you. Okay. When, uh, when it is Prisma, then uh, do the join or like do the join into the relations like this. If it is a type or and do it like this. So that is the, the difference we. So what we are doing method to speed up the Prisma. So we have to optimize your database schema, normalize and optimize your database schema in such a way that you don't need to do lots of joins, right? Uh, Prisma also, also supports, I think, pagination. So out of the box, so you don't need to worry much about it. And if you want to have a caching of the queries, you can just do add the read cast. So, and it's a TypeScript support, right? Uh, that's why I will, I'm still using Prisma and type or I mean, many of my projects, uh, Prisma is like my favorite. I define a Prisma schema, Prisma dot schema, and then you can just do a migrations and all. So this is the Prisma stuff, right? I was talking about Prisma in it, and you just specify this kind of a Prisma schema, right? And then you can start doing a Prisma migrate, generate and all those things are supported by this. So let's go back to our original place, Prisma. So Prisma is really good and it is being supported by the, the, the future latest startups, right? DigitalOcean, Airbnb, GitLab and all, all are using it. Then we have Type RM. So Type RM is I will go. I don't, I see one issue with the Type RM is on the GitHub. They have lots of issues and I don't know like are they being supported properly or not. Uh, type ORM is still slower when it comes to the other ORMs. It is creating large data sets because it's all about type and data. So it is all moves with the uh, classes and objects and you end up creating lots of uh, boilerplate abstraction for interfacing with the database. It is providing a really very powerful query builder because it is creating those entity relationships with you, right? It has a very good documentation, which I will say, because if you see the type ORM, you can find, okay, how to define the entities, relationships, one to one, one to many, many to many, how to define the eager fetch or lazy fetch, how to use a simple query builder. I mean, working with the type ORM, I am using type ORM from four to five years. And it really works fine until unless you don't end up in some complex transaction issues or something, right? So type ORM is I will recommend you to use it always. Then we talk about next. Next is like a query builder, but it does most of the things you need. It's not a big bang ORM where you are actually creating the entities and defining the relationships and all. It's all about you can just define the relationships. Okay, primary key, foreign key in your migrations and then you start fetching the data using simple next query. So it doesn't, uh, okay, how can I change the color? This mode doesn't look good. Okay, white is still fine. So if you see uh, migrations, this is how you write as your simple migrations and it provides a query builder. 
let's say I wanted to fetch the data. Then what I will do is simply next select from the books, right? So it doesn't give you, you are not writing any entity relationships at all. You can just write a simple model. If you are using TypeScript, simple types. Okay, what are the types you are going to fetch? Like this is the type. Okay, so what I did is I created a model user and then rest or oh, the syntax looks fine. So it, it, it has a nice support with the TypeScript, but obviously we are not doing a lots of typings while creating the entity relationships and all. So that's fine. If you want to have a minimal setup and a working setup, it works fine for even large projects. Until unless you are, you don't want it to expose and show your object relations in your uh, database. Okay, then we have waterline, objection JS and all. I mean, these are not uh, mature. Miku ORM, right? I haven't used Miku ORM. Objection JS is getting popular, I will say. It has all the transaction support, powerful querying. It's all about like they all moves around in the same shoes, right? The only thing is somewhat some is simplifying some other things and uh, they are trying to get popular there, right? So uh, this is uh, objection JS and then there is a Miku ORM, same as like the ORM. It's also growing. It has a nice TypeScript support because it's the latest uh, ORM. All the latest ORM like a Prisma, Miku ORM, objection JS has a nice support with the TypeScript and has same set of uh, features. But if I'm using type ORM and uh, Prisma, then why would I switch to objection JS and uh, waterline, right? So all the ORMs are like same. It's only about who is backed by the ORM, who is working on the, the support and issues. So I will say Prisma Labs is actively there on working on the Prisma ORM. SQLize is well established, so you can stick to SQLize if you are already using. Otherwise, use type ORM and Prisma Labs, Prisma ORM. And for the lightweight, you can use Nex, right? So this is Prisma. You can just uh, go and explore the documentation. It's really nice. Prisma and type ORM always will work. You can just use type ORM 3.x, start using it. So it's a little different and there are some breaking changes. But once you start using it, you will understand and you will really like it. I will see. So that's all. Uh, I will recommend you start using Prisma and the Typo RM for your future developments. Either you do with the Nest 